Hello, ethicists. Um, Grand Yoke, I'm your instructor here. Uh, with all of this coronavirus stuff going on, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of good we're already an online class. So um, we should not miss a beat through this. Uh, this video is about essay number two, uh, which I've posted to Moodle and printed a copy so that I can discuss with you right now. Um, I enjoyed reading your uh, your first essays. Um, I'm experimenting with, uh, and it's taking a little bit longer than uh, normal, but I'm exper experimenting with um, doing comments in line, um, and I, I hope you're finding those useful uh, for at least those of you who have submitted in Microsoft Word. Um, it's uh, the PDF, so I have to type into the comments bar, but nonetheless, I tried to offer um, consistent comments on your last writing assignment that will hopefully help you um, uh, do better on this one here. Uh, there's no point in offering comments if they don't help you do better. Um, so I'm trying to be as therapeutic as possible uh, with regard to that. Um, at this point, Saturday afternoon, I think I have five left to grade or something along those lines. So by the end of this weekend, everybody should have feedback on that first assignment. And um, in, including those that I granted ex extensions to. Uh, and um, I should also note that I saw an email go by. Um, the last day to withdraw has been extended. It was going to be Monday, um, the, 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 what is it? Um, the 16th of March. They've moved it to Friday the 20th of March. So um, if you're on the fence about whether or not you're going to stay with the class, you've got a couple of extra days uh, to decide as well. Um, at this point, I've only got a couple of emails that I've fallen behind with. Uh, by the end of the weekend, I should address those as well. Um, so, um, essays. Uh, the idea with these essays, as you know, having already written one, is to produce um, a 500 to 750 word essay based on one of the two prompts. Um, the two prompts um, this this time relate to Immanuel Kant and his grounding to metaphysic morals and John Stuart Mill and the two books that we read there, Utilitarianism and on liberty and at least with the mill essay i tried to formulate something timely topical and something that's on our mind right now um just a couple of things um it's based on what i saw from the last assignment about format um uh, these 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 are academic writing assignments um and uh i've asked you to follow the uh the how do i say it here um, the, the typical sort of um, essay format offering a brief introduction, body paragraphs, and um, a conclusion. Uh, I also uh, posted, and it's still there for your reference, the uh, essay blueprint um, that I formulated through writing support at the University of Windsor that uh, goes into more detail about how the various parts of your essay should be structured. Um, I'm, I'm not trying to be a stickler with regard to, you know, essay structure, format, or anything along those lines. The main thing I'm asking myself um, about your, your essay, and I, it's right on the assignment guides, right, right, right here, right, is are you offering a clear argument, right? Um, and that's, that's where the format guide actually comes into um uh, into effect there because um, if you know as well as I do, reading academic papers can can really be like pulling teeth. Right. So what you want to do is, especially when you're addressing dense theory or something weighty, is to make it as easy as possible for your reader to follow. Right. And that's 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 why we suggest that an introduction. Uh, do basically three things. Introduce the topic, outline the evidence, acting as sort of a roadmap for the rest of the essay, and stating a thesis. Um, this is useful to you as you write your essay as well, um, because a topic introduction, uh, a roadmap, um, acts as a guide for you while writing, 
right? So you've written an introduction and I'm going to do these three things, right? That all defend your main claim, your thesis statement here. Um, one, it just gives you a roadmap. So you know when you write, you have to do this, this, and this, right? And the thesis claim acts to unify your whole paper so that your reader finds it easy to follow. They don't have to ask themselves at every paragraph what is being argued here. So this all goes down to clarity, right? Uh, completeness. Um, in terms of responses that I've seen so far, um, completeness has to do with um, addressing and addressing as reasonably completely as possible the topic um, introduced by the prompt, right? So if I say, for example, address the opposition, introducing Socrates' position, um, in, you know, analyze the opposition between reason and, motion, and emotion that emerges from his work. If I don't have an introduction to Socrates' position or an overview or something that gives me something consistent about what Socrates is arguing, how, and why, I, I, I'm missing part of the essay, right? Um, so it's that that is um, that is that that is something that I'm looking for in your work. Um, the understanding exhibited in your use of the course material. Uh, this is where I'm 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 asking if you've gotten it right. Do you say Kant claims when Kant doesn't claim or claims something distinct from that? Right. Um, so you part of it has to be about getting it right. And then the strength of the argument or the insight into the material in question, right? So um, I, I, I am asking you this semester, in most cases, to formulate arguments. So um, I'm evaluating those arguments based on pretty standard um, argumentation, sort of evaluatory categories, right? Relevance are the, the, the reasons relevant um, to the conclusion that they're supporting. Acceptability, um, is there anything on the face of it that would lead me to question the veracity of the reason that's um, being offered, right? So if you see me issuing a comment that's, uh, that says, uh, well, I have to see an argument for this, or this is a controversial claim, right? It's, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just saying it needs more support than what you've offered, right? And then sufficiency, even given the reasons, is the conclusion uh, warranted or sufficiently established and supported by the reasons, right? So um, those are fairly standard um, argumentative uh, argumentation criteria. Um, that I'm looking for. I'm pleased to announce um, I had no academic integrity issues on this batch of essays. It is safe for the last few I am looking at. Um, so keep up that good work, right? Intellectual honesty, especially in the context of an ethics class, is something that is important. So um, this assignment, same as the last one, um, you see all the boilerplate there. There's a description of what these assignments are. There's a due date. I've given you one extra day with this because I was a little bit late um, posting the essay prompts. It's been a crazy week. Um, uh, by the way, thank you for your patience on the last one. My daughter is recovering well. Uh, we're just sheltering her from uh, any viral infection while she's, she's recovering from her heart surgery. Um, but I've got to say, she's amazing, right? Five-year-old heart surgery. She got up out of bed the day after the surgery and wanted to leave the hospital, right? She's pushing her IV pole down the hallway. It's, it, she's a trooper. So uh, thank you for um, those of you that have offered kind words, and um, she's doing great. We're doing great. She's doing better than we are, frankly. Um, so, uh, so you've got an extra day on this one because I was behind. Um, I'm playing catch up right now because I was sort of down for about three weeks um, managing her recovery. Uh, plagiarism, don't do it. Um, you haven't, so you're awesome, so thank you. Uh, if you do, I'll nail, it, nail you to the wall, but that's just what I'm contractually obligated to do. You've, you've, you've heard this all before. Don't do it. We won't have an issue. Um, missed assignments. Um, a, 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 a few of you contacted me within the uh, the period of time that was necessary to grant an extension. So that policy seems to be working well. Um, you know, 
I know everybody knows that life happens. I mean, this 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 whole pandemic situation demonstrates that life happens, and I'm very willing to be flexible within reason um, given this situation. So if you're sick or something's happened in your life and you're just unable to meet the deadline, uh, what you got to do in order to get an extension is to contact me before the deadline or within 12 hours of the deadline, and you'll find I'm very forthcoming and very willing to work with you. Um, with regard to these deadlines, um, I want to see you succeed. So um, yeah, I'm I'm laying out a structure that allows you to. I'm trying anyway. Um, assignment submission. There were no issues on the last assignment there, uh, but nonetheless, give me give me your document. That's your job. Give me the right document. That's also your job, and make sure I've got it on time because if I don't have it, it's not there. Um, if something goes amiss, you've got that 12-hour period after the deadline to contact me, and we'll correct it. Um, and again, uh, 500 um, to 750 words, and choose only one of these prompts, right? So Cant and Mill are your options there. Um, format requirements, these are fairly standard. Um, one inch margin set to normal on uh, Microsoft Word, double space, 12 font. Right. That way I know um, at a glance whether or not you've offered something long enough. Um, so uh, referencing, um, it, again, use a recognized reference style. Um, I don't care which one. Um, use the one that gives you practice in your discipline. If um, your education or nursing, that's usually APA. Um, uh, if your humanities or social sciences, MLA or Chicago might be the way to go. Uh, I read them all. Um, Frankly, I give seminars on how to properly reference in them all. So um, just pick one and do it consistently. And there's a link to the Owl Purdue site there uh, as well with good um, guides. Uh, in terms of APA, um, I'm aware that most of you are used to APA 6th uh, edition. They've introduced APA 7th edition. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just pick one and use it consistently. If you're used to six, that's great. If you want to practice using seven, that's great. If you want to use Chicago, that's great. Uh, if you want to use a different reference style, uh, if you're an engineer and you like IEEE, that's fine too. I read that as well. Or ASA. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, I, I know them. And again, uh, .doc, .docx, or PDF format um, on or before the, the due date in question. Um, that way I can open easily and read the document. I think Moodle won't even accept it unless it's in one of those formats, so do that. Uh, you can save, like if you're in pages or something like that, you can save as a dot .doc or a dot .docx, right? Um, and easy peasy, um, just about every word processor can save as a PDF, though I won't be able to comment in line if I'm getting PDFs. So um, you need an expensive PDF editor to do that. Um, so uh, make sure uh, you answer these prompts um, as, as, as completely as possible. Make sure you don't miss a part because that's, that's going to cost you marks. Um, my advice is to break them down into their parts and make sure you do everything there. Um, so, first prompt related to Kant. Um, Kant introduces the humanity principle, and then I quote it for you, act in such a way that you treat humanity, whether in your own person or the person of another, always as an end in itself and never at merely as a means, merely as important there, as another formulation of the categorical imperative. This principle, he argues, rests on the dignity of human beings. He argues that human beings are objects of respect. That's on page 36. I'm just directing you to the argument there. Um, quick side note with regard to that. Students in the past have um, gotten hung up on the idea of human beings being objects of respect. What Kant is getting at here is that um, when something is subjectively valuable, for example, this is my coffee mug, and I like this coffee mug. It keeps my coffee warm, feels good to drink out of, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite coffee mugs. I like it. It's subjectively valuable, but it wouldn't have value unless I subjectively value it, right? 
Um, so it is a subject of value to me, whereas human beings, whether or not I like you, are objectively valuable. You're objects of respect, right? So, right, what he's getting at with the term objective there, right, is that human beings are objectively valued, we're objects of respect as distinct from things that would have no value, value unless I subjectively valued them, right? So, anyhow, that was an aside, right? So, um, he says that this principle rests on the dignity of human beings. Introduce Kant's deontological ethics generally. So, give me an overview of Kant. Right. What's duty? What are the categorical imperatives? Do that briefly. And um, uh, formulate an essay that discusses this transition, right? the transition between right, this, um, the, the idea of human beings um, having this special status, right? um, being objects of respect, and the foundation of the second formulation of the categorical imperative. Uh, while you're doing that, answer um, what, wh why are human beings, according to Kant, objects of respect? And then finally, um, discuss how this position flows, uh, follows naturally, as Kant argues it does, from the first formulation of the categorical imperative. I know it's a lot, but this is the Kant question. Um, this is the question that gets you offering an overview and addressing at least two formulations of the categorical imperative and the transition between them. Um, here is your hint. Uh, this is the most important word that um, sort of governs the transition between the first formulation of the categorical imperative through objects of respect to the second formulation of the categorical imperative. I'll write it on the board. Why not? All right. A Q G O N O M Y. Autonomy. All right. Uh, Michael Sandel has a great de definition and discussion of this term. Um, so it is the, the, the key term. I suppose I should make my Y look like a Y. Anyhow, it is the key term um, that is at work in understanding this aspect, right? So what do I want you to do here? Um, give me an overview of Kant, right? Uh, introduce the two formulations of the categorical imperative and explain how he gets from the first to the second. And I'm telling you right now, it's because we're objects of respect. Why are we objects of respect? Because we have autonomy. What does Kant mean by that? Sandel defines it, I define it um, on my video as well. Uh, so um, anyhow, you can answer that question or you can answer the second essay prompt um, related to John Stuart Mill, which I think is a bit more straightforward and a little bit more timely. I, I suspect that I will be reading a lot of Mill papers to tell you the truth. Right, uh, but that's up to you. Um, Kant papers are interesting as well. Um, Kant actually ugs, uh, rears his ugly head again at us um, uh, towards the end of the class in that material as well. So it's 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 good to get a firm, solid foundation in terms of Kantian ethics. He might be well. He's one of the big three most important ethical theorists um, in Western philosophy. A guy would argue. So um, uh, you, you, you might engage with them. Um, but nonetheless, uh, prompt number two related to Mill introducing an overview of utilitarianism as discussed by John Stuart Mill. So not Bentham's utilitarianism, Mill's. Um, and uh, you, you get that from this book, right? Uh, formulate an essay that assesses the moral soundness of the recommended policy of social distancing in light of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. All right. um, as part of your analysis, be sure to engage with both the assigned sections of uh, uh, with both the assigned sections of utilitarianism and on liberty. All right, both. All right. Um, I'm requiring that for a couple of reasons. I'll, so first off, what do you do here? All right. 
what's the principle of futility? Great is good for the greatest number. Um, uh, so not calculated, not selfishly, but in terms of the collective, right? It's kind of like cost-benefit analysis, but it's not financial. It's it's based on um, happiness, right? Which Mill defines as pleasure with as little pain mixed in as possible, right? An overabundance of pleasure and um, very little pain, that sort of thing. Um, so introduce that, right? Um, then uh, calculate, uh, just do the calculation along with the uh, mill. Like, why should we sh socially distance? Right? That's what they're all recommending, right? But even if I'm not sick, right? Even if I get sick, I'm probably, it's probably not gonna be fatal, right? Why should I socially distance, right? Because I'm, I'm not worried, right? Well, the answer is, something that rests on a calculation of the greatest good for the greatest number, right? Why should I do this? Not because it's the greatest a, a, calcula a calculation of the greatest good for me, but if we all do this, there is a general benefit for everyone, right, is the thought. Now, the reason I'm having you bring in on liberty, right, is because um, the, the argument, at least in the first section, which I had you read here, seems to restrain sort of analyses based on general utility. Calculating the greatest good for the greatest number tends to run over individual rights. What, what about my rights, right? And that's what, like, mandatory quarantines or self-quarantines seem to do. But in what circumstances does Mill argue that society or the government are warranted in interfering with the, the liberty of um, individual members of a society? Well, that's the principle of harm, to prevent harm to others. You see, you see the way the calculation, and so, so your job is to provide an analysis based on um, this material. This is important, right? Um, I don't want these just to be reflection papers on what you think of social distancing and, um, and, and, and COVID-19. What I want is an analysis of utilitarianism. I want you to think through and evaluate what John Stuart Mill would say about this particular aspect of the pandemic response. Right? So um, again, your criteria are clarity, completeness, understanding, and strength of argument. Um, so those are the four criteria I evaluate you on the basis of. Um, keep in mind um, these format requirements. Uh, if you're referencing, um, use a recognized style. Uh, format your, um, your your essay as an essay with an introduction that does those things, body paragraphs, and a conclusion that kind of ties everything in a bow, right? And drives home the point of the essay, right? So. Um, I've given you that resource, the, the blueprint of an essay, sort of resource document there for you. So um, uh, bring all of your resources to bear on this, and uh, I really do look forward to reading your responses. It's been fun um, reading your papers this semester. I've enjoyed it, so uh, keep up the good work. All right.